Hello my dear learners, welcome to my video lecture series on robot technology. In this lecture series, we will be understanding quite a lot about robot technology. So this video lecture is presented by me, Shamant. So the important objectives of this video lectures is to understand the historical development of the robot, to understand the different parts of a robot and their configurations types of robotic sensors to identify the different types of grippers used in the robotics and understand the different types of ro ro robot programming methods. So this is these are the uh, main objectives of this particular video lecture series uh, because uh, if at all you want to understand the robot technology for you, you need to understand how exactly the robot started or why why was it created the historical development of its robot of the robot and then you need to understand the different parts of a robot without understanding the parts of a robot the configuration of the robots cannot be understood and then different types of sensors that is used by a robot see human beings have some have different sense organs and those sense organs are used for a different purpose Likewise, even robots have different sensors to feel and also to understand or to analyze the data or the products what is being coming, what is uh, what the robot is coming in contact with. So we have to understand about those those sensors, and then you have to identify the different types of grippers used in robotics. Why is it used? For what purpose it is used? What are what are its applications? How does it? Uh, make a movement all those things is very much important and then we'll be understanding the different types of robot programming methods so how do you program a robot how does a robot work based on a human beings instructions so you need to make the robot understand this is what it needs to do for that you require a robot programming and you need to understand that so these are some of the objectives that we'll be learning in the lecture series so let us begin our lecture. So the introduction part of the robot talks about a robot being used in a manufacturing industry. Robots are used in many domains. It is used for domestic purpose. It is used in different purposes or different application, but we are confining ourselves to understand the robot in the working of the manufacturing industry. So the robot is an automatically controlled material handling unit that is widely used in manufacturing industry. So what are we understanding? The robot is the automatically controlled material handling unit. So it is required for handling the materials and moving the materials from one part or one place to another location. They are generally used for high volume production when an industry is producing the same product for high quantity or the volume of the quantity of the products whatever is manufactured is very high then robots are used. So that is what the general introduction about the robot is. So we'll understand what is the definition of the robot and also what is robotics and then move further to understand different things whatever we have discussed in the objectives part. So a robot, the definition of the robot says it is a programmable multifunctional manipulator. I have highlighted most of the words which is very important here, which is designed to move materials, parts, tools or special devices through variable programmed motions for the performance of variety of tasks. So we say that a robot is a programmable multifunctional manipulator. What do you understand by this? A programmable robot is programmable it means that you can program the robot according to your instructions so you can program the robot for one particular set of application and then completely change that instructions and then make the robot to do another task so that is what programmable means and it is a multifunctional manipulator so it can actually uh, do many functions at a single at a single ins instant so you can, uh, the robot can actually hold the workpiece, it can move the workpiece from one part to another, it can do many functions. That is why we say it is a multifunctional manipulator, which is designed especially to move the materials, move the parts, move the tools 
or any special devices through variable programmed motion so here the motions of the robot is programmed so that is why we call it as variable programmed motions for what for the performance of a variety of tasks so you have to do variety of tasks if the same thing has been instructed for a human being to be uh, to execute the work what has been allocated he might take one day for that but if at all it is done or if it is replaced by a robot the same work will be executed by a robot within an hour so that is what the advantage that we get by using a robot because of these important things that it has what is robotics then a ro what robotics is defined as a field of technology it is a field of technology which is nothing but the science which deals with again i have highlighted important words here which deals with conception design construction operation and application of robots so let us understand one by one each word one by one what is conception conception is nothing but you are imagining or visualizing what a robot needs to be done what it should do the robotic engineer generally conceptualizes the robot he visualizes this is for what application that i require the robot for and he designs the look of the robot whether it should look like a human whether it should look like some animal whether it should look like a machine or it is simple as in case of this particular diagram here in your right corner so that is the design aspect of the robot and then construction how do you build the robot what materials are you going to use to construct the robot so should it be made up of that material which is very heavy or should we should it be made of lighter material and then its operation and application what kind of operation should it perform what are the applications of the robot so these are the things that is mainly dealt in the field of the technology and that is how robotics emerges so that is the definition of a robot and a robotics so many important points are there you need to have a complete knowledge of these points and then you need to write the definition uh, and uh, the definition of the robot as well as definition of robotics when it is asked in your examination so now let us try to understand the historical development of the robots the historical development of the robot dates back to 1921 that is when the term robot was introduced the term robot was introduced in a play by an author called as Carol Capek in his 1921 play he actually introduced the word robota which is derived from czech word which means servants or workers so you can just see here the uh, cartoon depicting the uh, transport of the food from one probably from a kitchen to the dining area so it is taking the food for its living members whoever is living in the uh, family so that is how uh, the robot term was actually uh, came into existence and then but actual modern robot was developed in 1954 so it was actually called as unimate which was developed or invented by george devol and uh, it was in uh, ford's ford motor company that uh, this particular robot was uh, introduced it was generally introduced for picking the heavy objects from one place and then putting it on to the other place so there was heavy object which was actually moving on the conveyors and uh, the conveyors uh, the parts which was on the conveyor had to picked up from the conveyor and put it into a, a place where it is kept or it is stored so the human effort was actually involved a lot and uh, humans could not have picked it very fastly and that is when the uh, the thought came into existence that there should be some machine which has to be put in place so that it picks up the heavy objects and then uh, put it onto a store uh, or a place where it is actually kept that is when george devol actually uh, invented uh, unimate which was the first modern robot which actually came into existence uh, in ford motor company so moving on further uh, sony actually in 1999 they introduced a robotic dog called as ibo it was named as ibo and it was capable of interacting with humans this is the same replica of the uh, dog which was actually made by sony and then immediately in 2000 uh, japanese company honda they introduced a robot called as asimo which was same to uh, or similar 
of uh, a human and it is a humanoid project which they actually released in 2000 and the important features of the asimo was uh, it could run walk communicate with humans interact with its environment it could recognize voice and the posture of the human beings so that was uh, the development uh, up till 2000 but later on uh, from 2000 till 2020 there was a lot of uh, uh, innovation happened in the field of robotics and uh, one company actually stood uh, the uh, stood among the group or uh, so which was actually highlighted was boston dynamics they actually started uh, the manufacturing of robots in very different way and uh, they uh, conceptualized the animals in the form of uh, robots and then uh, they manufactured uh, a robotic dog it might be a robotic spider or different types of uh, robots they actually manufactured for different applications uh, mainly uh, they concentrate on defense application there is one more robot which you can actually see here which is uh, a tanker kind of a robot and then it is used for disposal of bombs or to check some suspected objects uh, uh, by the terrorist so this is how actually the development of robot uh, happened in the uh, 21st century that is from 2000 till 2020 you can actually see an image of a robot here uh, which was actually made as a film and it was directed uh, and the concept again uh, the concept of the robot what i am talking is uh, very important it was way back uh, which was actually uh, shown in the film called as i robot in hollywood and then uh, in india uh, we all saw uh, rajnikanth make two films uh, which was actually uh, talking about robots uh, so we can also see how it is useful for mankind and also how it is a disadvantage for mankind also both the versions were actually shown so you need to understand some of the important things here for what purpose you are actually developing the robot and its application so without that in mind if at all you do something you now the technology has gone way beyond it is artificial intelligence uh, the robot can understand itself it can feel those things are an added advantage but again you need to take care of it in such a way that everything is taken care of it should not harm the mankind that is one of the important things that you need to take care while you are developing a robot that was about historical development and now uh, let us see some of the classification of a robot there are different classifications of robot that is available to you but i'm going to discuss about the three important classification uh, uh, based on which the robots are classified the first characteristics is uh, based on its degree of freedom the second classification is based on the physical configuration and the third classification is based on its drive system so these are some of the important classification or some of the important uh, uh, characteristics by which you actually classify the robots first one we'll just discuss what is degree of freedom the first one is called a general purpose robot and the general purpose robot is generally called because it has six degrees of freedom the motions we when i when i discuss about the definition i told variable programmed motion so that variable programmed motion talks about degree of freedom so to what extent the robot can have its flexibility and in space in how many degrees can it actually move how what is the degree of freedom so that is why for if the robot has six degrees of freedom then it is called as a general purpose robot which can be used for general things or day-to-day -day application what a robot can do and then the next type of robot is called as redundant robot and redundant robot has more than six degrees of freedom when a robot has more than six degrees of freedom then you call it as a redundant robot and then the next type of re robot is deficient robot and deficient robot is lesser than six degrees of freedom so here six degrees of freedom is the uh, highlight and the classification revolves around the six degrees of freedom if it has exactly six degrees of freedom you call it as a general purpose robot more than six degrees of freedom you call it as redundant robot less than six degrees of freedom you call it as a deficient robot that is how the robots are classified and then uh, coming to the classification of the robot it is classified based on its physical configuration so now what do you mean by physical configuration so physical configuration is nothing but the way it can configure or the ro the way robot can configure its motions so that is how we can classify and also it it depicts 
in what particular space does it move wherever it has been installed say for example the robot is a stationary robot and if it is a stationary robot in what space it can actually move that is what it means the first type of robot is cartesian configuration robot and cartesian configuration robot says that it moves in cartesian coordinates so cartesian coordinates mainly talks about x y and z coordinates the next type of robot what you can see or what you can classify is cylindrical configuration robots and cylindrical configuration robot talks about the working space being cylinder that is about cylindrical configuration robot and then polar coordinates robots polar configuration robot talks about the workspace being polar coordinates where you have more than x y and z di directions and then you have jointed arm configuration robots and jointed arm configuration robot talks about generally uh, the movement happening in the form of your shoulder and the arm however you move the shoulder and the arm in the same way the jointed arm configuration robot also moves so that is about the physical configuration of a robot then talking about the third classification here it is the drive systems and the drive systems are hydraulic pneumatic and then electric so here you want a robot to move in a particular degree of freedom and then you want to move in a particular configuration for these movements to be possible you need a drive system drive system and that drive system is it can be hydraulic so you can make a robot to work entirely through a hydraulic system that means with the use of a fluid which is nothing but oil and then here pneumatic drive system which is nothing but air so air is compressed air is being used and uh, with the help of compressed air you can make the movements of the uh, arm or any other particular part of a robot uh, to get the proper motion and then you have electric system electric system is completely uh, new technology so nowadays all the systems uh, which is actually the electronic systems which is coming into market they are all ele electric system wherein the servo motors are used and uh, because of the help of uh, servo motors the motion also whatever is uh, got by the particular uh, device whatever the whatever the electric system is using will give you more accuracy than the hydraulic and the pneumatic system so electric systems are used wherever the accuracy is more important and also the motion which happens is very quicker so that is how the classification of robot is happening and uh, we are majorly uh, discussing uh, physical configuration robots we'll be discussing about physical configuration robots uh, uh, where you will understand uh, these four type of robots uh, which are generally used in industry so this is about classification of robots and uh, this is for uh, today's lecture so hope you have understood the introduction part of the robots the definition part of a robot and then uh, we talked about the historical development and then the classification of robots so this is for uh, this is all for today's lecture hope you continue to watch video lectures uh, if you are new to this particular video lecture and if you are seeing it for the first time do subscribe to my video so to my youtube channel inquisitive so that uh, you will get further updates on all the videos that i do Thanks a lot for watching.